we'll get started. Uh, we'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, July 7th, 2021 to order. Uh, the usual reminders, this meeting's being recorded. All votes will be taken via roll call. And I'll go through the list. Uh, David Phil, Amy Parsons, John Moskevitz, Jane Nevin Smith, and Joyce Chunglo are here from the select board. Uh, first order is the consent agenda. We have minutes from August 5th, 2020, August 19th, 2020, uh, warrants AP 2150, AP 2150S, AP 214- Do I get rid of that? Do I just- There's no X on it. Sorry, uh, let me start over. Uh, AP 2150, AP 2150S, AP 2149V, AP 2149, AP 2149S, AP 2151S, AP 2151, AP 2152-2, AP 2152S, AP 2152, PR2125, PR2126, AP2154, AP2154R, AP2154S, AP2201S, and AP2201. Uh, let's see. We have a municipal hearing officer contract between the town of Hadley and the city of Northampton. The select board will approve the contract. Uh, approve the MOU between the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the Town of Hadley for hauling and disposal of sludge, uh, sewage sludge. Uh, common victualler ac application for uh, Oligino Investment DBA Cheesy Street Grill, Western Mass at 367 Russell Street. Uh, we'll approve the contract for sealer of weights and measures contract between the Town of Hadley and the City of Northampton and an alternate appointment for a building inspector of Kevin Ross. So moved. Second. All right, so motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any discussion on any of that? Uh, Jennifer, roll call. Uh, roll call vote. And I'm gonna let y'all know that I'm on the phone with John Wiskevitz. He can hear us, but he's having problems. So he's gonna vote aye to the consent agenda, but then um, he's gonna sign out and come back and join us. Okay. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Okay. And now I'm going to assist John. Okay. And then, so I'm going to jump around a little bit here. Uh, we have a, uh, Joyce is going to talk about this for a little bit, the uh, Person of the Year uh, Award from the Daily Hampshire Gazette, and that is uh, Christian Chokas. So Joyce, do you wanna talk about that for a little bit? Well, just uh, Christian Chokas has just been uh, a model young person for the town of Hadley. Uh, he's been involved with so many different activities, the food pantry, collecting food. Um, oh my God, I don't have the whole list in front of me and I hope someone will jump in and help me with this, but. You know, um, him being named um, with the award like this, it's like, my God, what are we raising here in Hadley? We have had uh, two of our students on this and, and, and uh, Christian is the latest one. And I, I just have been so proud that it was him. Um, he's been an exemplary student, uh, active uh, at Hopkins Academy uh, and throughout the uh, community, the church, uh, he's done so much there and um, many other places in town. And, you know, if, if, if I had, I should really should have been more prepared, but I just uh, think that he has just such model parents and grandparents that, um, and a sister that has done so well also with um, her Girl Scout award and everything that he has certainly followed um, the footsteps of, of many people, but has marked his own way. Um, through being a volunteer. And um, I hope that as he gets older, that he will come back and um, share some of his volunteerism throughout town after he goes to college and comes back and maybe hopefully settles in town because these are the kind of people that we want um, to come back and, and be our residents. So congratulations, Christian. And um, 
many kudos to all that you have done. Um, congratulations. Congratulations. Did yes, you want indeed. Question or now's your chance. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'd like to thank the select board and the town of Hadley for this proclamation. It was very unexpected and it's a very, very big honor to me. I'm very happy to live in Hadley and I'll continue to do charitable work whenever and wherever I can. Thank you. Do you have the proclamation, David? Uh, yes. Could I don't have that because I can't get on my computer. Could you read the proclamation? I will. Uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Hadley by the Select Board Proclamation 2021, whereas Christian Chokas is a student of Hopkins Academy in Hadley, whereas Christian Chokas has collected food for neighbors in need for community food pantries during the pandemic, and whereas Christian Chokas has volunteered for Megan's Light and Meals on Wheels, and whereas Christian Chokas has been an outstanding community member whereas Christian Chogas has been awarded the Young Community Leader Award from the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Now, therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of its inhabitants, do congratulate uh, Christian Chogas on the occasion of the Young Community Leader Award. We have no doubt that your achievements serve as an example to others, and we take great satisfaction that you are having such a successful and distinguished career. Congratulations, given the seventh day of July in the year 2021. And uh, it will be signed by the select board. It's not yet, but we'll get you a, a nice copy of that. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Well, thank you and congratulations. And oh, there's there a it is. There's a picture of it. There's the award. Perfect. Excellent. All right, congratulations again, and we'll keep moving here. Uh, now I can't get the board docs because I have Jennifer's screen. <laughs> Me too. There we go. There we go. All right, I'm going to jump down to uh, 8.1 because Paul Pfeiffer, I think, is here still. Yep, I see him. Uh, Arrowhead Block Party. This was business not anticipated. This is for uh, this weekend, so we need to get it in for this meeting. Oh, oh can you hear me? Yes. yes. Paul. You're alive, John. You're alive. Thank you. I don't know what's going on with this computer. Hey, thanks, David. I'll be quick. So thank you, Select Board, for fitting me in real quickly. Uh, I live on Arrowhead Drive, which is a dead-end drive off of Spruce Hill. We are planning a block party this weekend, Sunday. I wish I could invite everybody on the screen, but it's uh, really just for our street. Um, several high school graduations over the last year or so. Uh, COVID being somewhat contained, mostly contained, and then also uh, some of our neighbors, the Dickendale Tessier, are relocating after decades, 40 years of their original owners here from the 70s on our streets. Wow. So, yeah. So we're going to, um, I'm sure a lot of you know them. So we're going to, I'm asking if, if it's possible if we just block off the road just for four to eight on Sunday. It's not a highly trafficked road, as you can imagine, but sometimes we get folks. I think it's a cut through or a, a way to avoid Route 9 and they kind of fly by and we'll have kids up and down with bikes. So sorry about the late request. I didn't realize it, it, it took this work. I want to just say thanks to David Phil and Mike Mason and Chief uh, Spank and Abel for weighing in. So if we could make it possible, great. Uh, so thanks for thinking about it. And so I think I think it's great. We'll all be there, Paul. Thanks. For all right. Everything. Good. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll see you. <laughs> I think it's great. I, I vote yes. Um, Absolutely. I think it would be great to have uh, a send off for Dick and Dale. I think it's a, a nice gesture on Arrowhead. They've been there, I think, since the beginning of Arrowhead. So, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Where are they going? North Can Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina to be around their son. I mean, they're, they've been pretty open about it. So, um, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely miss them. They're our direct neighbors and they're great neighbors. So we're, we're going to yeah. miss them. Well, we wish them the best. You know, you know, Dick was on our board of health for a multitude of years and you know, so we wish them well also. Yeah, I'll pass that on. Thanks. Thank you. We're going to let them borrow a couple of sawhorses from the DPW, pick them up, and then return them when they're done in order to just signify that the road's closed. And uh, so I just need a motion to approve the street closure. And to... I, I did the first part, David. Okay. Second. I'll move. Second. Second by Jane. And any discussion on that? 
Jennifer. Sounds good. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right, so we're going to move down. Uh, we'll do David? Public- yes. uh, it's Diane. Sorry to interrupt. Could I finish off kind yep. of putting on a different hat, mother hat off, Park and Rec Commissioner hat on, just introduce Don Gallagher very quick because I have like 15 people jumping around ready to go out and celebrate Christian right now. <laughs> sure. Is that okay? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. So you might see, uh, well, on my screen down in the bottom, the Park and Rec um, box, we have um, excitedly extended and had an offer accepted by Hadley Town resident um, Donald Gallagher, nicknamed Don. So he actually started yesterday and has been in our park and rec office. We are thrilled to have him on board. Um, He comes with a great deal of experience, um, 40 years of organizational and program development, both in private and nonprofit in the public sectors. Um, He was the director of student life at Springfield Public Schools for the middle school before he came to join us. So we're excited about that experience he brings. He was the Director of Outreach and Community Education um, in Northampton, so there's a lot of local experience there as well. And he also worked at the Boys Club, Boys and Girls Club of Williamstown, Mass, um, as the Executive Director, so kind of a direct correlation to our Park and Rec Department. He received his degree from Springfield College um, and has certifications from Harvard Graduate Business School in Family Engagement, which is important. And lastly, which we're also excited to, which is really not a requirement of the position, but is a great um, addition that he's bringing, is he has a great lack, or I'm sorry, great skill in getting grants. Um, So we're hoping that his grant writing skills will um, benefit us and we will reap some further um, benefits for the park and rec department in that way. So I wanted to take an opportunity to just introduce him to the group and um, he's going to post his office hours. As you know, we're a little bit cut down with timing um, that we have available for that position. So he will be um, posting his hours and be available. So lucky to have found a gem. That's for sure. Sounds like it. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're so excited with him. He's a great guy. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you great. so much. I see he's unmuted. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> we're I got to find him. Where is he? No, they all are different. Park and rec. Yeah, no picture, just park and rec. But uh, if you'd like to say a few words, say hello. Go ahead. Sure. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Thanks, David. Thank you to the Park and Rec Commission, uh, Christian's mom and the, rec- the other two commissioners, Steve and Jim, and the staff at the town hall couldn't have been more welcoming on my first couple of days, helping me uh, get off and running. Uh, Christian, congratulations on your award. Uh, I hope to be able to help foster some of that leadership development that uh, you've uh, exemplified here in the town of Hadley with other youth, uh, with coaches and volunteers. Uh, Love living in Hadley for the last dozen years or so and uh, look forward to contributing wherever I can uh, for safe and healthy uh, opportunities for our youth and, and entire community, including the collaborations with the senior center and the library and uh, making sure that programs are being able uh, to be offered uh, from the cradle to the grave. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you. Um, anything else, Diane, before you celebrate? Uh, well, just on a personal level, thank you very much to the select board and town of Hadley. Um, we have such a great tight knit community with so many areas of opportunities for volunteering that if kids are interested in it between park and rec, woo, um, Hadley mothers club, um, the national honor society kids, we have so many opportunities and needs within the town with the food pantry and, you know, even we, they've done landscaping at the church and at the library with girl scout and boy scout awards and things like that. So, um, I appreciate you recognizing that. 
Um, luckily, Christian really doesn't need recognition to do what he does. He really is a great kid, and I know I'm a little biased, but um, it's nice when they get some recognition. So we do greatly appreciate that and the effort that you put through to get that. We, I was talking to Jen earlier. Thanks for coordinating, Jen. And we also got a cite, uh, citation from the state Senate for Christian as well. So that was a really nice um, mail thing for us to receive. So thank you very much. Excellent. So deserving for sure. My, my video is now active. If anybody wants to take a look. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't know. I, I knew I was muted, but I didn't hit the video too. So uh, thanks again for the welcome and all the support that you're giving me uh, in my new position. I appreciate it. Glad to have you. All right. Well, enjoy your night and uh, thanks for stopping by and saying hi and Diane, go celebrate. Thanks. Thank you all. To stay, but we are going to go celebrate. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then, thank you. I'm just gonna go back to uh, Mr. Gallagher, who's here from Cheesy Street Grill, I believe. I don't, there's a lot of people on the screen. I'm trying to sort them out. Is he still here? Actually, it's Mr. Oligino, John. There's John right here. He says he's Kaylin, but it's actually John. Yeah, I'm apparently signed in under my daughter's thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, say hello. Uh, tell us what, uh, what your restaurant is. Um, well, it's, um, I guess, a fast, casual, gourmet grilled cheese restaurant, and um, they're, uh, they're actually pretty amazing. I got to say, I'm giving up my career as a truck driver to, to kind of switch gears, if you would, and do this now. So I found these guys out near Boston, and I decided that I'd like to bring it here to Western Mass. Great. And uh, the address 367 Russell Street is where? What's it next to? Uh, that is actually in the food court at the Hampshire Mall. Okay. I'll be uh, directly underneath uh, the roller skating. So. Well, glad to have you in town. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be there. All right. And good luck. Thank you. Welcome. All right. All right. We'll keep going down to... Uh, Carolyn, you want to hit the finance committee that's posted for 615? Sure. The finance committee is not meeting tonight, but um, and I can explain why. There are um, several uh, year-end transfers, but they're not ready to vote on that. We still need some more updated numbers. Fortunately, there is enough money in the finance committee's reserve fund, so they'll be addressing that next week, um, and they'll report back to you the details of what those transfers were. Um, I will need your approval from tonight to transfer $22,031.33 from the health insurance account, which is number 914, to cover a cumulative deficit in chapter 90 funds account. The deficit began in 2016, it was before uh, Christmas here. Uh, it's been cumulative. So it's typically these are expenditures that should have been charged to the general fund, but were charged to chapter 90. And then the state did not reimburse that. Um, so, which means that, that basically each year that gets taken out of free cash and we don't want that. So um, I'd like to tidy that up using David Nixon's term um, and transferring that money, but we will need the select board to approve that transfer. I get a motion. I move. Second. A motion by Jane, second by Amy. Any other discussion? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Great, right, thank you. That's it. Yep. All right. And uh, do you have anything from town administrator report? Or not tonight? No, I only to remind you that I did include um, the special town meeting schedule. Um, so just to have that, just I wanted to keep you up to date. That's a schedule all the way through from when we open the warrant, close the warrant, um, when we advertise, when the public form in, but that's all included in that document that's attached to board docs. Okay. Do One of the reasons we were looking at that had to do with the, the governor's office and the opening for the three new buildings. Is there any note, any word on that? Yeah, so this was for the special town meeting. 
Um, but the, we do not have a date yet. And as I think I notified most of the board members, I was out since last week. So I will be following up and having that meeting with Haley, Michael Spake, Mabel, and um, Patrick. So we'll get that date for you. But I've had contact with both offices. So they are really want a date, um, but I, I've got some times to narrow it down. So okay. I'll have that. Hopefully I'll have that by the, our next meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll get down to, uh, is Dr. Moser here? No, but I can text her. No, I, actually, He's I, here. here. So good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. There she is. All right. So do you want to talk about the Amherst and Hadley Board of Health Shared Service Agreement? Well, yeah, briefly, um, you know, each local board of health, you know, including our, our town of Hadley and, and the board of health here are responsible for all uh, infectious disease, contact tracing, uh, not, you know, COVID aside, tuberculosis, Lyme disease, a lot of, a lot of work that goes on with that. Um, and some of it's done by our public health nurse, Marge, uh, but a lot of it's been done by the CTC, which is the state uh, contact tracing collaborative. The state's closing that down September 30th. So all responsibility uh, for that type of activity is, is returning to the local uh, town and the local boards uh, of health. The state realizes that uh, most local boards of health don't have uh, staff or funding to perform the functions that they're asking us to do. So they're releasing uh, large amounts of money in grants. Um, Amherst, we, we, you had discussed at your last meeting signing on to the grant with Northampton, uh, which is great, uh, but that will not guarantee us that we would have enough hours of contact tracer should there be another epidemic or a pandemic. So um, Amherst is applying for a grant. They've asked us to, uh, invited us to join in. Uh, it costs us nothing. We have no obligation. And it will provide us with um, a full-time uh, employee, you know, public health person who would be able to do that work for us. Uh, the great thing is that it won't be an employee of Hadley. Amherst will do the hiring, the training, uh, housing, and supervision of that employee. So I, I don't see a downside. Do you, do you need approval for that tonight or is this just a heads up on it or? Well, I, I, Carolyn, does Amherst want a, a, a letter of interest from us for, I, I know they have not received it there. They've applied for the grant, but I, I think, I know they had spoken with Carolyn. I think they kind of want to know if we're in or not. I think they wanted to know if, if, if the interest is there and uh, a letter of interest will be required, not right away, but um, she'll know closer to August. Is there, any I can get that ready. is there any monies involved in it at all? There's no money that we have to spend. Okay. Then I move we accept this. I'll or second, second by the end, I guess. All right. Motion by Jane and second by Amy. And uh, do you want to add on the uh, letter of interest now? And the letter of interest when the time comes. Okay. And that okay with you, Amy, for your second? That's fine. Just so we don't have to bring it back in, back in front of the board again. In a <laughs> Thank month. you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any other discussion on that? No? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Um, Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Muscovitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. All right. And next I have uh, Haley here, or Jane, are you gonna talk about the age and dementia front? Haley's here. Okay. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> Tell us about the age and dementia friendly uh, endeavor. Sure. Um, the age friendly initiative is a global and national and statewide initiative um, with member communities committing to thinking through various planning endeavors in multiple sectors with aging in place in mind and continually trying to think about how to make communities 
um, easier to age in place and also, but not only for older adults, but really amenable to all ages and with accessibility in mind. We have a special opportunity to join the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's um, sort of umbrella regional um, team of communities um, that are committing to sort of to join this initiative and their help will give us access to um, a, a planning muscle. Um, their senior planner, Becky Bosch, um, is the project coordinator and would be working with us, um, me and our committee that has been forming. We have sort of a, um, an informal group of people of community members, older adults and um, board members from the Council on Aging have been talking about this for a few months. Um, and she has been, and Becky has been guiding us and she's here tonight. Um, and this special, this opportunity gives us a chance to, to, to have them help develop and distribute and analyze um, a needs assessment survey for Hadley. Um, and it's of no cost to us. They're supported in this work by a grant from the Tufts Health, Health Plan Foundation, and they'd be able to um, contribute over $13,000 worth of um, time um, to this effort for us. And it would sort of be our launching pad, but it would be an ongoing initiative that we'd be active, um, that the town would be committing to being, you know, kind of part of a conversation, really, you know, going forward, um, having the age-friendly lens of, of thinking through how we, well, how we might just continually refine um, the ability to live in Hadley um, with comfort and ease. Um, so I'm proposing, I, I am hoping that you will support our joining this effort and ex, um, signing an MOU with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and also submitting a letter of agreement or a, le a letter of agreement to the AARP Age Friendly Network for Massachusetts. So as we talked um, on the phone the other day, Haley, we talked about it also, um, which you haven't mentioned tonight, is about addressing the, um, the disorder of dementia. Um, so a lot of this is actually uh, hitting that area of dementia, but not only for the patient, but for the caregivers and supporting them and what they have to deal with with people that have dementia. Um, there are a number of people out there that um, dementia starts sometimes at an early age and it comes in different forms. It uh, changes as the person gets older and the caregivers really have a lot to deal, deal with. And I think having support for them is um, extremely important as well as the uh, person that has the dementia. So that's what really um, piqued my curiosity and my awareness and actually uh, support for this program that you're starting. I think it all entails that, um, not just with what you had mentioned, but I think it just moves on to more things that are important for the people of our community <laughs> since we have, you know, an elder population here. Yeah. And I thank you for mentioning that, Joyce. It's what we want to concurrently be thinking about is it's a little weird, but there are actually two movements, age-friendly Massachusetts and dementia-friendly Massachusetts. And they're, they're separate, but very connected. And we hope to initiate those efforts simultaneously. And so Joyce is quite right that our focus on um, being dementia competent and having our Council on Aging and our staff and our volunteers bring a greater awareness of this issue, definitely for caregivers, also for people who are suffering with this disease, is a very big motivator and will definitely be ever present in everything that we're thinking about taking on. Mm -hmm. So you definitely have my support on it. I'll make a motion, uh, Haley, for us to go forward with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and uh, doing a letter of support or anything else that you need from us. I absolutely will second that. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any other discussion on this? Jennifer? Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Muscovitz? John? John? <laughs> uh, John? 
<laughs> yes, John. Nod. I think he's frozen. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Roll call vote. Yes. Nope. You muted. John. Yes. Thank you. And Parsons. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll go down to, we'll go back up to public comments for now. And it's just about 6.30. We're gonna allow 15 minutes for public comments. Please limit them to three minutes per, uh, each so that others may have an opportunity to speak. And we'll take any issues under advisement. Generally, we don't uh, carry on a conversation back and forth during public comments for information and advisement purposes. But if anyone's here for public comments, uh, wave at me and I'll call on you to go. I have a question. Yes. Uh, during, when we discuss the um, appointment question, will the audience be allowed to speak or do they need to make their comments now in public comments? They have 15 minutes now to make whatever comments they'd like to make about whatever. But I think that it will also be open for discussion at that time also, um, not entailing a whole uh, amount of time to discuss, but certainly I think it should be open for, for their comments too. Yep, that's fine. All right, who wants to go first? Janice uh, has her hand up. Who does? Janice. Oh, Janice, go ahead. Okay, hi, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to, to make some comments regarding the, um, the Conservation Commission. Um, for those who don't know, I'm the conservation staff for Hadley. Um, Alexander Dawson hired me to help with the Conservation Commission paperwork in 2005. I already knew wetlands, but I learned the wetland regulations, environmental law, and to stand up for what we know is right. I've been working for the Conservation Commission ever since. I would not have stayed 16 years if I had not been proud of them and the way they work to protect wetlands and farmlands in your town. They give a lot of their time to the commission work, especially this last year. I think Paulette is a great CONCOM chair. She has a strong background in wetlands and environmental planning. She's not afraid to stand up for what she believes in and she knows the wetland regulations. She is irreplaceable. The wetland regulations we have to use are difficult and complicated, but she's correct in her application of them. Some people may get irritated because they don't, because she doesn't sugarcoat things or they don't know the regulations. So they don't understand why she and the conservation commission have to insist on what they have to insist on for compliance. These are state wetland regulations intended to protect the wetlands and water quality in your town. I still feel Alexandra with me when I need to stand up for what is right. This attempt to dismantle the conservation commission is wrong. If the select board goes through this malicious attack on the Conservation Commission, I will not be able to work for this town anymore and will give my notice. For those of you who knew Alexandra, think about what she would say about this select board act. Do the right thing. Keep the Hadley Con Com at seven members, including Paulette and Steve. Thank you. Hey, uh, I have John Edwards. Thank you for the opportunity to present to the board. I am a forester and I work with conservation commissions on a regular basis in my practice. And although I have to admit, I haven't always agreed with some of the decisions that they have uh, put upon me and others in the, my forestry uh, profession, I think that a strong and robust board is a key to, to good conservation and good land protection. And so I support the, uh, the notion that we need a full board of seven people. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, Andy? I think Mark's hand was up before mine. Okay, Mark. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll try and be brief. Um, I heard that there was a uh, movement afoot to um, eviscerate the Conservation Commission because of unpopular decisions. Um, and I think that it's not a popular job, but it's a vital, uh, important job. Uh, 
and I, I want to salute them for their efforts uh, to maintain, protect, and uh, conserve our environment. Um, there's many complex re regulations, local, state, and federal, uh, that they stay on top of, and we don't always like them. I, you know, I, I liken it to uh, maybe not a good analogy, but they're like our environmental parents. You know, we want to go out and party tonight, and they say, no, you have a test tomorrow, or that's going to hurt you down the road. And uh, they've got the long view, and um, I don't think we should cut them off at, at, at the knees because we don't like the uh, short answers that we get. Um, they, I think that to cut them down, um, especially to such effectual um, members, is a rather impactful decision. And I think that something like that um, should not be made on a arguably capricious uh, decision by five elected members, uh, but rather should be, um, should invite town opinion. And then I think that's, I guess, what we're getting 15 minutes here to speak for. Um, and I should have said at the beginning that I live at 13 Island Circle and I am also a member of the planning board, but I'm not speaking on their behalf. I'm speaking on my own behalf. So, um, and uh, I will relinquish the mic and hope that you uh, listen to your constituents. Thank you. Andy. Uh, Andy Morris, Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. Will the planning board be voting tonight to reduce the size of the Conservation Commission or is this just a, dis a discussion? Uh, select board, you mean? Not the planning board. Select board, yes, thank you. Uh, it depends if there's a motion to do it. It was put on as an agenda item as discussion. If someone makes a motion and seconds it, there'll be a vote. If not, then there won't be. Uh, this is what this is why I feel um, important town boards need to be elected um, and not appointed because then people can't serve at the capricious whim of the select board. Uh, all you have to do is disagree with the select board and they don't reappoint you. Um, believe me, I know. Thank you. Paula. There you go. Hi, it is my belief that Steve Simkowitz and I were appointed under the consent agenda of June 23rd. Items on a consent agenda are exceptions to the general process of the select board's meeting and items placed on the agenda are acted upon as one unit to be passed without debate. The selectmen's appointments were part of the consent agenda. Our two names were on that list and all items were passed by a unanimous vote of the select board present. In a text to me during the meeting, Mr. Phil wrote that they withheld the Conservation Commission members due to not receiving our letters of interest, but they had been received and our names were not removed from the appointment list by him or anyone else. I believe Mr. Phil exceeded his authority stating such and acting unilaterally on behalf of the select board without their input on the matter, thus violating his sworn duty to the select board and the town. When questioned near the end of the meeting about other appointments, the chair stated that people on the list had been appointed. Steve and I were on that list. It's our belief that the commission appointments have been made. So the question of reducing the conservation commission from seven to five members is moot. The conservation commission should represent a variety of interests, skills, and background. I have a bachelor in science in environmental studies and planning analysis and a minor in business. I worked for 25 years in various positions in environmental planning and engineering. I studied under Alexander Dawson, who asked me to work for the Conservation Commission and then later serve on the commission. Attorney Dawson has a saying, everyone usually gets what they want. They may have to jump through a few hoops first, but most end up getting what they want. It's the philosophy that has been followed by this commission and I have proudly served as a commission member since 2006. The last permit that the Conservation Commission denied was in 2016. And prior to that, only three permits have been denied since 1973. 
The commission has a legal responsibility to administer the Wetlands Protection Act. We serve the community in a regulatory capacity. By singling members out for doing their sworn job and choosing not to reappoint them because some people need, believe we need to be reined in is a violation of our federal and state civil rights and interference with our legal duties under the Wetlands Protection Act and the Town of Hadley Wetland Bylaw. Members of the commission are dedicated to permitting the projects that meet legal requirements and should be allowed to continue to operate with all seven members. However, if the board decides to reduce the membership of the commission, then some of the members of the commission are prepared to resign, leaving the select board to act as a conservation commission and having to restart many hearings, including the Route 9 reconstruction, especially on that one, since Steve and I were two out of the four members present. And if all members present are not there to vote, then that hearing has to be heard again. I ask you not to take this decision lightly and think about the implications of your actions before you vote. Tony. Tony. I think you have your hand up. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, Tony Lynn Morelli, 127 Rocky Hill Road. I've lived in Hadley for nearly a decade and I've been on the Hadley Conservation Commission for four years, so I'm the youngest member. Um, I second what Janice and Paulette said. Uh, I have a PhD in ecology. I did postdoctoral research at UC Berkeley in bioinformatics. I work as a research ecologist with the U.S. Geological Survey and a professor in environmental conservation at UMass where I study the impacts of climate change on species and ecosystems and on the maple syrup industry and on brook trout. And I'm probably the least qualified member on the Conservation Commission. In the last few months, I've joined Paulette, Janice and the rest of the CONCOM as we work triple hours with meetings until nearly 11 p.m. every two weeks, plus site visits to try to sort out permitting for properties along the Connecticut River, the largest river system in the Northeast and one of the Valley's greatest natural resources to ensure good process while the state widens Route 9 in, and um, ensuring good process while the state widens Route 9 in the next few years and generally to fulfill our obligations to uphold the Wetlands Protection Act. In addition to a time-consuming job, I'm a, a mom of a busy eight-year-old and my dad was recently in the ICU with COVID. In other words, I, like all of you, I'm very busy. Extra hours of the CONCOM means that I miss my kids' sporting events, that our farmer commissioners are exhausted when they have to wake up at the crack of dawn the next morning, their conservation agent, Janice, the only one of the group that gets paid, works overtime with that pay. That's okay. We're all volunteers and we're willing to put in time in order to uphold the regulations that fall under our commission. And now we hear that decisions are being made about the commission without any discussion or input from us. Not only does this seem like bad governance, inappropriate power leveraging, a logistical nightmare, as Paulette mentioned, and a huge blow to morale for the remaining members, but also the loss of our chair, Paulette, is devastating. Paulette Kuzdeba, again, an unpaid volunteer, puts blood, sweat, and tears into the CONCOM with grace and fortitude. The expertise and experience she and our agent, Jana Stone, who have also said she would resign if this went through, bring to the CONCOM is invaluable. Not a week goes by when I don't think, what would we do without them? And the toxic bl blowback I've seen her take over the years is remarkable. This high school teacher who works hard all day long and then on her evenings, weekends, and summers gets yelled at, threatened, berated, and on and on by citizens who are upset by rules and laws that, as you heard, we are only upholding in order to maintain a good environment, not only for plants and wildlife, but also for the public to have clean air, water, landscapes, a nice river to play in and look at, as well as to maintain farms as farms in Hadley, a huge part of what we do. I ask the select board to seriously consider its course of action. If it moves forward in reducing the Conservation Commission from seven to five without the agreement of the commission or at least a vote from the town, I will tender my resignation. Okay, Mark. Good evening. Uh, I just have a couple comments to make about issues with the conservation. Uh, I've had interest in the riverfront permitting process as I own riverfront property. I've been present on every Zoom conservation meeting and Riverfront Bylaw Committee since the beginning of the year. I've witnessed during conservation meetings many open meeting law violations, severe bias, and preferential treatment during these meetings. Conservation has repeatedly tried to impose conditions irrelevant to conservation matters. During the Riverfront Bylaw, uh, during the Riverfront Bylaw Committee meetings, 
which uh, Paulette was on that uh, that committee, when all other committees assisted the residents, conservation held vital information and hindered the process for us landowners and property owners and homeowners. They showed no interest in assisting residents with the process. I feel the conservation chair member needs to resign or not be reappointed to the committee. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Michelle, you got about a minute if you wanna. Hey, um, I've been on many committees. I serve on one board. Things go much better when you have a larger committee or board than when you have a smaller one. You can put tasks out to many people. What I think we're doing here is an amputation um, in an attempt to solve a perceived problem which may have been brought on by one or two complaints. Um, we're going to lose the highly functional, historically very cohesive and attentive committee. And I do think that's a shame. I do think this should be submitted to public comment, not just, I mean, in a broader sense, have the whole town comment rather than make any decision tonight. And anybody who has um, bones to pick with the Conservation Commission should make a complaint to the Conservation Commission and go up the standard procedure rather than attempt to get a committee amputated. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's the 15. Um, we're gonna go down to 7.1, boards and committee appointment renewals additional. I'll do the, uh, the easy one first. And that is uh, cemetery committee. We have, uh, let's see here. Right one. Kevin Grennan is a new appointment to this uh, cemetery committee. And then we have town collector, Susan Glowatsky. We have an agricultural commission uh, member, Adam Goodman. And also at the same time, we have a removal of uh, George Moriarty from the ambulance oversight committee. He was uh, accidentally left on the list. Um, he, he hasn't been part, he was part of the ambulance study committee, I guess it was to do the original action ambulance contract, but not the ambulance oversight committee. So if I could get a motion on those ones first. So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any other discussion on those appointments? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Jane? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that was a yes. Yes, Chung sorry. Chung Chungaloo? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. And then in, uh, in the agenda item, we have the select board will also discuss the lowering of the numbers of the Conservation Commission from seven to five. And as far as the uh, letters of interest that we have, we have uh, Paulette and Steve for conservation. So I would like to point out Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 41, Section 2, which I will read. Establishment of new boards or office increase or decrease in board membership or numbers of officers. Um, basically it says, if a town votes to diminish the number of members of any board, such diminution shall be made by choosing annually such number as will within three years affect it. And a vote to diminish shall remain in force until the diminution is under its accomplishment which means you can't do both of them. And in fact, I don't believe we should do either. According to town council, the town meeting vote authorizes three to seven members to be appointed to the conservation commission. And as long as we stay within that three to seven members, we are the appointing authority for the conservation commission. And yes, but Massachusetts general law says, if you reduce or increase, you don't do it more than one a year. Chapter 41, section two. Have you asked KP Law about that? Carolyn, did we ask as far as, not that question, okay. Okay. Are we leaving it open to comments at this point? Or yeah. are we, okay. 
<clears throat> so I believe we appointed these people last week. They were on the list. It was a consent agenda. Jessica Spanknable says consent agendas are not reversible. They weren't appointed to anything. They were just on the list. They had no board or committee listed as what they were being appointed to. So we appointed everyone on the list. They are only appoint the only thing they do in town is serve on conservation. I wasn't here for that um, for that meeting. Um, unfortunately, uh, whether or not it's an annual appointment, the Board of Selectmen has the authority to remove or increase the boards as they see that <clears throat> is necessary. Um, this is what I have uh, learned over the years. My contention is, is that I don't have a problem with their knowledge um, and their backgrounds and their uh, whatever they have done over the past 16 to whatever year since Aunt Alexander Dawson uh, was on the committee. Um, what I have found and what I am disturbed about, and maybe you know we should have um, addressed these at some other time, but within the last couple of years, I have heard um, that our citizens of Hadley, uh, when they have gone to the ComCom, uh, have not had good uh, <laughs> relations with them in guiding them through the processes that they've had. And even speaking to some of the Conservation Commission um, members, uh, this was told to them that they have not really walked people through what they have needed to do to get permits. Um, and I'm going to use an example because I was um, told that I could. I'm going to go back to last year when uh, Eric Lebrecht was just redoing his lawn. And all of a sudden he had a cease and desist order uh, for removing loam, putting new loam in, and redoing his lawn. This is a landscaper that has a business that actually knows what he's doing, that he had a deceased and assist order to stop what he was doing on his own property, even though I know it was in a floodplain. But then as the time progressed, he was told he missed a Zoomed meeting, he was told, uh, oh, let's start the whole process over and pretend that that never happened. You know, this is not things that people want to hear when we're talking about good landowners, property owners, business owners that live here in town. Um, this is not what I want to hear <laughs> as a select board member. And I think that we need to, you know, appreciate what we do with our own residents in town. We are here for them. We are here to walk them through the process and whether or not that they have to, as somebody had said previously in the 15 minute comment, if they have to jump through hoops, they have to jump through hoops. This is not what we are about in Hadley. We need to help people go through processes and I'm sorry that, you know, I feel like this and I'm not saying that any, all of it, all of the members are wrong, but I'm saying that we have not done this over the past few years in helping people do what they need to do. I think that um, uh, we, you know, I'm not even talking about riverfront property because personally, I don't give a crap about riverfront property. I know that they're Hadley owners. I, I know that people own their property down there, but I'm talking about just routine people that live in town that abut certain different properties that we have not been able to um, uh, appreciate and actually help them through the process like we should do. So that's where I'm coming from on this. And maybe I'm a miss. Um, that we haven't done what we've done or the ComCom -com hasn't done what they've come. And I know that they have their policies and procedures that they've done. 
And right now I have not, I am really upset that you are threatening me that everybody on the ComCom is going to quit. If we do what we want to do in reducing this committee, or if we're going to not reappoint somebody, don't, please don't threaten somebody. Let's, you know, have a conversation here. You know, you don't, if we reduce somebody, if we reduce the committee, well, we're all going to quit. And that's going to hold up the Route 9 process. And that's going to do this and do that. That's not what it's all about. So that's how I'm feeling right now. So you better talk to me about better things right now. I like to hear from Paulette. Uh, we got some select board comments first. Um, I'll just hey, say. David. That, yeah. Go ahead, John. David. I brought this up to reduce the committee to five originally. We've got other committees, and when we um, created the diversity committee and all of that, everybody wanted however many members we've got. We've got over 10 on there now, I believe. You know, and I, I'm comfortable with five. The board has five. The planning board has five. And everybody seems to be working together pretty well. I wanted to look at this so it's more streamlined, so you have five people presenting something instead of seven, and you have seven different opinions, and you're not getting anywhere on a lot of these uh, critical projects. As far as the state's concerned, we've been through the state three phases of Route 9. They could give a crap less what we think in the town. They're going to do what they want to do anyway, whether the conservation signs it or not. So, you know, I, I, I'm kind of with Joyce here. You know, I, I don't know why these people are threatening us when we're trying to streamline this and make this a better committee if, if we do reduce it. I'll just say that this is not an issue of what the environmental laws are, what the wetlands laws are. Um, and this, to me, this is not about the riverfront property or anything like that. This is the, all the complaints that I've gotten most of them from farmers in town are that it's a customer service issue. And what they're hearing when they go to DEP to the state is that basically good luck. Hadley is probably the most difficult to navigate and to deal with. That's what they're being told by DEP. And so that's what they're bringing back to us. It's not a matter of we're trying to skirt around laws. We're trying to undermine the laws. And that's why I would hope that, and I'm not saying we will, but if we reduce the size of the commission, the idea that you'll resign is silly to me. Because if you care about the environment, you care about enforcing the laws and the rules. We need you on the committee, not to make threats and to resign. It just it doesn't make sense. So if you care about the town and you care about the environment, you should be doing what's best for the environment, not playing games with threats, in my opinion. So I'll just leave I absolutely agree. I just wanted to piggyback on that. I have also received numerous phone calls and emails and people that are honestly too afraid to even put anything publicly because of retribution. And I think that's disgusting. And I think it's sad. When we're here, we're team Hadley. That is who we are. That is what we are. I don't care your political affiliation. I don't care about anything else. I'm on this board. I am also not paid. I am also a busy person. I work three jobs. Okay. I'm team Hadley and I'm here for the town. So when I get complaints about people that feel like, oh, I'm a problem for this board or, oh, they don't really feel like helping me. That is not what I signed up for. And that should certainly not be what anyone else signs up for. And if you're going to threaten quitting because you're busy, you have a, a, a busy life, you have stuff, fine. You're not a team player. That's how I feel. All right. Anything from the select board before we go? Paula has her hand up. Anything else? Paula, go ahead. Okay. So first I want to address the issue that um, Joyce brought up. Um, plain and simple, violation of law is no excuse. If someone goes through a stop sign, oh, I didn't see it. I didn't know there was a stop sign there. They're still going to get in trouble and pulled over by a police officer. The Wetlands Protection Act and a landscaper, no doubt, has to understand Wetlands Act. You said, oh, it's in the floodplain. 
Yes, the floodplain is a very important resource area in the community. And any fill that is brought in and not equal amounts taken out alters the way that the water flows through the town. And this is something that the town is trying to go through recertification for. So if we have projects going on left and right that are not being done um, by the book, then we're gonna lose our flood certification and our flood insurance. As far as this person, they did get a cease and desist. When someone is violating the Wetlands Protection Act, they are issued a cease and desist order. Then they come before the commission and the commission requires them to file what is called an after the fact permit to make sure they are in compliance. So that is what the situation was with this person. And they received their permit because they were able to document that the amount of fill removed and the amount of fill um, brought back in were equal amounts. That's what is part of what the commission's job is. Um, as far as complaints, this is the first time that the select board as a whole has even brought this issue to the Conservation Commission. Instead of cutting the commission off at the knees, why did the select board not bring specific complaints with dates, times, and information to a meeting with the Conservation Commission? It's unheard of that you only take one side and you don't have a conversation with the other side before you take an action. And that is why one of the reasons that the commissioners, it's not that they're not team players, they are team players. They're supporting the laws in the wetlands, the Wetlands Protection Act, which is a mass general law. That is something, and we have a Hadley wetland bylaw. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And many of the people who get in trouble have already filed permits with the Conservation Commission. They know what they're doing and they do it until they get um, caught. And Mr. Phil, I don't know what you're talking about and when you're referring to farmers, because I have issued many of an emergency certification for farmers to put pumps into rivers and to brooks in order to maintain their fields. And as a matter of fact, DEP told us, the commission, you should be requiring them to make a permit. And the commission very bluntly told DEP, if we have to do that, you will not have any food left on the tables because Hadley is a farming community and the Conservation Commission supports the farmers. We do what we can to work with them and get them through the process. When someone calls and talks to Janice and they wanna know what the process is, she walks them through it. She sends them emails. She talks to them because it is inappropriate for commission members to have multiple conversations with someone prior to a public hearing. That's called ex parte communication. And I would like to bring up the fact that um, Joyce called me yesterday very specifically saying, and I quote, the select board has decided that we are reducing the conservation commission members from five to three or from seven to five. So there's no reason for you and Steve to be reappointed. Now, I find that quite interesting that someone who wasn't at the last meeting when the appointments were done is calling me on something that hasn't even been discussed by the select board. That is called ex parte communication. And yep. it is a serious that's issue. Called, that's actually called a posted meeting agenda that had that listed as of last Thursday, I believe, when the agenda was posted. You said I, she, I understand that, Mr. Phil, but why did she call me yesterday saying a decision has been made so there's no reason for you to and Steve to be reappointed? That was, I wrote down word for word what she said because it took me by surprise. So I'm sorry, when someone calls you and says, hi, this is Joyce Chunglo. I just wanna let you know and proceeded to tell me that when the discussion hasn't been made yet, that's ex parte communication. So I'm sorry, I have an issue with that. 
And I think a lot of the people who are here supporting the Conservation Commission have problems with that too. But I, I was saying that because it was, I, I was saying that because it was on the agenda. It wasn't Joyce, that I had, that there was a decision already made. Joyce, you very bluntly said to me, and I will quote, cause I wrote it down. The I don't care. I don't care what you wrote down. The select I said it. I said it because it was. Okay, Joyce, you should have called me and said, it's on the agenda. You may want to show up. This is the discussion being had. Instead, you said to me, the select board has decided to reduce the number from seven to five. So there's no need for Steve and you to be reappointed. Why would you say that if it's a discussion item on the agenda? I did not say that I you didn't did think that you that. and Steve need to be reappointed. I just said that the uh, it was out there to reduce the uh, commission from five to seven, of seven to five. I did not specifically say that, I, I, I mean, it, it, words are, are what they are, but it is what I said is that they, it was on the agenda to reduce the commission from seven to five. Agenda, Joyce. I'm sorry. I'm going to this out here, so uh, I'm going to cut it off there. Um, anything else from the select board? You know, we wouldn't be having this discussion if, if it was already committed to what we were going to do. I brought this up, as I said, just to streamline another, another board that we appoint, and hopefully it would have helped. I didn't think it was going to come down to this. Why I had brought it up was because of the amount of complaints that we received from the Conservation Commission. I mean... There's got to be over two dozen complaints over the last two or three years. And, and, and again, it's, it, it seems like the Conservation Commission is just not helping the public to move, move everything through smoothly, to give them their permits, and to get their jobs done. So only four permits have been denied since 1973 from the Conservation Commission. So you're telling me that because we've denied four permits since 1973, we're not being helpful in approving permits and moving them through. And if this has been an issue over the last couple of years, why has the select board sat on this and not brought it to the attention of the commission and asked for a joint meeting to discuss these things? It's backdoor politics and it's wrong. No, I, I mean, I agree with you, Paula. But all these complaints have been sent to the Conservation Commission unless the administrator did not send them to you. But David was directed from the board to make sure that you received all of these. And it's just been building up since two or three years now. So I will ask Janice, have you received any formal complaints from the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. or administration? No, other than Mark Britton's recent um, appeal, but otherwise, no. And just How many permits have you per have you given in the last three years? I don't know. We've we've probably done a couple dozen just in the last couple months. So, in a given year, what kind? I mean, I know there's a lot going on with right now with the re. Uh, doing of the river permits, but in general, what kind of numbers are we looking for? Two a month? Probably something like that. Well, maybe three in, in, in a normal year, but this past year has is, is been probably quadruple that. So I, I don't know. I wasn't prepared, so I don't have a number. <laughs> it seems like most people that do come to the conservation get what they want. You know, they leave with their permit and get to be doing what they were going to do. I will say the days of submitting an application or a plan on a napkin are over. The Conservation Commission and all state boards, I mean, planning board you know, has to have surveyed plans. We allow people to draw a plan or get a plot plan and sketch onto it and show dimensions onto it as to what they're submitting. 
planning board requires a professional plan before they do it. We are very helpful to people in working with them. I know the complaints that Mr. Britton, some of the things he said, um, we worked with him to try and get him his permit. He wanted the five campers based on the law, the bylaw that the town voted in that had specific language that said, campers must meet setbacks for a single family residential structure, means that the Conservation Commission was doing what the town voted in. All that, I thought you said you didn't see any of the complaints in the last three years. Um, I, Mr. Britton just filed an appeal with the conservation. <clears throat> and that's what he wrote in his appeal. There's been plenty of other riverfront owners and property owners that have submitted complaints. I can get you a list to the select board if you guys need them. Um, Mr. Britton, um, one concern is, are these people who are have legal permits or are they illegal permits? Because a lot of people who complain are people who have not received permits or are in violation of the town bylaw for the campers, which until town meeting was one per lot. And then the others have never filed with the Conservation Commission and are in violation of the Wetlands Protection Act and the wetlands bylaw in the town, in addition to the zoning bylaw. Okay, uh, Bill, you have your hands up. You're muted. You're muted, Bill. Uh, I am based, uh, speaking based on my experience and not as a member of the planning board, but based on my experience with the planning board, I, I am concerned that you are trying to redesign the town's land use permitting uh, system on the fly. And um, it's a pretty well, um, well running system at the moment. And it depends in really large part on the expertise of the members of the individual boards in some of these technical areas, whether it be zoning or wetlands protection. Um, there may well be a good reason to take a look at the overall system structure of the land use permitting, but um, doing it in response to a few complaints uh, at the last minute without really a lot of discussion um, among the affected boards, and will be affected if conservation cannot uh, pursue its permits, people who come to us will only get a zoning permit, but they won't be able to proceed with their project. Um, I'm concerned that you're basically looking at, uh, you're, you're making a decision to hire a conservation director at 45 or $55,000 a year uh, with no input from anybody. And that's where you're going to end up if you just proceed without involving all the players. Uh, Jim, you had, you had your hand up and you're on the conservation, aren't you? Where'd you go? Yeah, no, I, I sure am. Uh, I'm not gonna reiterate uh, some of the other comments, but uh, I gotta say that, you know, uh, the team Hadley uh, quote and, um, you know, the duty attacking the, the integrity of the commission members and customer service issues and, and just the lack of, of communication with the commission about what we do. Um, you know, I've been on the commission for 12 years and I'm like the junior member. So people are not doing this um, to provide poor customer service or to act out on personal vendettas in this town. Um, if you want to provide more and improve customer service, which I would question some of the accusations and again, lack of documentation coming to us about complaints, you know, staff the, uh, Janice works 
tirelessly as this Paulette um, and, uh, you know, invest in the, the staffing to support the commission. Um, I really, um, you know, no clear or compelling rationale has been given for reducing the commission side, size, except for what I heard now, streamlining, um, or uh, now what uh, Bill just mentioned, the desire to hire a conservation director. That's all news to us, uh, as are most of the complaints. Uh, the only complaint, again, is the letter of complaint to the, um, to the select board that was um, from Mark Britton, you know, which is vague, unsupported by facts. Uh, and he's in violation of the Wetlands Protection Act our town's bylaw, the zoning bylaw, uh, and the state requirements for a dock permit from the DEP. Um, so, you know, it's, um, it's notable that after attacking the integrity of the commission filing complaints, uh, he agreed to all the conditions during the hearing and, and offered to reduce the two campers himself. This was never suggested by the commission. Um, and, you know, I think it just has a chilling effect that dedicated and knowledgeable volunteers appear to face sanction and uh, have the select board sort of question their integrity and intent. Um, it just sends a chilling message to the town citizens and other boards made up of appointed volunteers. Um, so I'm also, uh, unfortunately, you know, if the select board does take the course of action, it seems to be intending to um, you know, I am also prepared to, um, to resign. I mean, I've done this for 12 years. Others have done it much longer. Um, and it's just, um, it's really kind of slap in the face. And, it, and, and I think it, it shows a lack of understanding of the work of the commission and what's required um, to meet state law and wetlands regulations, so. Okay, let's... Uh... What do we want to do with this? I make a motion that we continue this discussion over a period of time and try and get more facts instead of making a knee-jerk reaction. I also want to say that I used to work for the U.S. Department of Agriculture and I worked very closely with the Natural Resource Conservation Services and I am quite well aware of wetlands and everything that has to do with farming um, in regards to that. Um, so it's not necessarily that accusations are baseless, but I think what David said is that this is a huge customer service issue. And what makes me sad is that I have received a lot of complaints and very detailed emails and people are too afraid to come forward because of retribution. And that's honestly what makes me sad as a town citizen. Um, and Amy, re Amy, retribution from the commission. I'm when just, you have received complaints. I think they're, they're business owners. They're people that don't want to lose business for coming forward. Then why did you not come to me or to Janice and say, hey, we've got a complaint about X, Y, and Z. And hear the other side of the story. Maybe these are people who received a violation order because they were doing work when they weren't supposed to. They didn't have a permit. And... You did never talk to us by going through this and saying, oh, well, we've got all these complaints. Well, the commission has not seen any documentation of complaints. And just for the matter, I know you're taught, there was a motion on the, on the floor to continue this discussion. The issue is that if, we, if you decide, and we believe that we've already been reappointed, um, if you decide not to reappoint us, then the Route 9 hearing will be delayed because only four members were present and Steve and I were two of those four members. So it will have to go back to square one. And John, you mentioned D, uh, Route, Mass DOT doesn't care what Hadley has to say. Well, they've been very good in working with us and addressing issues that we have pointed out that haven't, weren't adequately addressed so that their order of conditions does not get superseded or appealed by DEP, which has happened in the past and drags projects out for an extended period. We know that happened with the Home Depot project. 
The commission issued a permit, DEP appealed it, and it took years for that to end up getting settled. And this is what you're jeopardizing with the Route 9 project. Okay. Was there any second to Jane's motion? All right. So then. Yeah, I'll, I'll second it for for discussion. I mean, if she want if, if she wants to continue, I, I would like to get all these complaints to the Conservation Commission again through our administrator. I just there was four more today that was sent to me. I, you know? I got those too. I think that's because of the hearing. And I, if there's a, an issue, I think we need to explore it further before we make a sudden move like this. And we've had a conservation commission since 1960. Having seven people on it for another year is not going to be the end of Hadley. Right. Any other discussion on that motion? Jennifer? Roll call vote. Phil? No. Chungalo? No. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? No. Thank you. All right, so then what are we going to do? I'm going to make a motion to uh, reappoint Stephen Sinkowitz to the con com and reduce it by one person. Right. Second. Second by Amy. And discussion on that. And based on what Jane said uh, about the MGL, I guess that would meet that. I'm not a lawyer, but. All right. And, and then next year we'll get rid of another member. We will look at it. So it probably makes sense to not have a six person board that would lead to a tie. This is, this is Janice Stone. I have my hand raised. I didn't know noticed yep. it or not. Am I allowed to say anything or not yet? Yeah, go ahead. Just make it short. Okay. Um, the other thing is we did reach out to MACC, the Mass Association of Conservation Commissioners, about whether um, the a change in the number of um, Conservation Commission members was something the select board could do or if it had to be town meeting. And they told us that it needed to be town meeting. Okay. The town meeting bylaw or the town meeting warrant article authorizes three to seven members per town meeting vote. So we'd still be within that uh, authorized number. Well, they were saying any change in the numbers, but uh, uh, we're checking the town council. <laughs> okay. Edwin. Um, hi, uh, Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street, Hadley. I've been on the uh, Conservation Commission for a long time. And I would think that you would need an odd number of commissioners or members on, the, on a committee to make the committee smooth and uh, not, be, not have tied votes at times. So I don't think reducing it by one is a good idea. I, I, I am a volunteer. I received zero funds from the town for my service on the committee. I have dealt with Paulette personally. I've had her come out. We've had emergency um, orders done. I know that the commission will bend over backwards to help farmers. And I do think that just by reducing the, the membership by one is the wrong thing to do. And you need an odd number of people on the committee, period.
period in the subject. Thank you very much, Mr. Trump. I, uh, I agree with you, Edwin, but it sounds like whatever uh, MGL that Jane found said we can only do it one at a time. Uh, so that, I think that's the reason, reason for that. So, but, Mr. But I, Phil, could I speak at, for 20 seconds? I've had my hand raised. I just wanted to say in good leadership practice, I understand I've heard um, at least three or four of you say that you felt threatened. Um, but I think in good leadership, you would understand that the quitting is the only e effort that these people who feel threatened. And so that's their only action that they could get your attention. I think good leadership would be to deescalate and listen and, and back off and make it, unless there's urgency, which, which reeks of vindictiveness. So thank you. All right, so motion on the floor is to re, uh, reappoint Steve. Um, board. Any other discussion from the select board on that? Jennifer? We'll call vote, Phil. Nevin Smith? No. Chungalo? Yes. Waskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Yes. Um, thank you. And uh, Janice, um, I do hope that you'll stay because I, I will say that uh, after, uh, I don't know, it's probably been a year of the project coordination meeting. I uh, just having you on the meetings and working with you, you've been great to, to deal with and very informative, knowledge, knowledgeable. So I, I do hope you'll stay. And along with all the other commission members, uh, you guys do serve an important function. And uh, this is by no means trying to skirt around any environmental rules or the intentions of the commission. Uh, in my mind, it's purely customer service. And uh, I will say though, that we do need to collect all of the letters, uh, Carolyn and Jennifer, could we go back in the, in the email archives and uh, gather up everything for, I don't know, I guess the last three years is what John said, and forward those all over to the members so they could review. You uh, want email complaints? Or, or paper. I know we get some paper ones too, but I don't know if we still have those or not. I know there's been a few phone calls too to the administrator. I don't know if they have paper file of them or not, but I think some of those were David Nixon versus. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the people that called me, I said, call the administrator and, and lodge your complaint, you know, with the, with our administration, not with an individual from the board of selectmen. Okay. All right, um, any announcements for this evening? I do have a few um, since I wasn't here this last round of uh, the meeting I didn't attend last time. Um, sadly, we have had some passings in Hadley and, um, oh dear. So we have um, Susan Martula. She is the sister of Dick and um, David Martula here in Hadley. I, we send our condolences to their families. Elizabeth Smith, uh, condolences to her family. Herbert William Nabala, known as Bill Nabala. Uh, we do send our condolences to his family. Mary Sadowski, uh, we send our condolences to her family and James Freeman. We send our condolences to his family. Um, and as we just had said a few months ago, Margaret had just passed away. So uh, James and Margaret are now together within a short period of time. So condolences to their family and friends. Thank you. Any other announcements? Yes, um, the town nurse is back at the senior center on Wednesday mornings from nine to 12. That's not just for seniors, that's for any town resident who is interested in seeing the town nurse. And I would like to offer congratulations to the Golden Hawks baseball team. Yes, absolutely. That was quite a feat for state championship. 
I think, uh, what was it? 36 years ago was the last one. So like the curse of the Bambino there. <laughs> Since 1985. We're so we would have, I think the kids decided that they didn't want to play on Hopkins ground, that they were willing to go someplace else. Um, and it was coach Ron Bereska who coached the 1985 team. So, uh, you know, uh, much thought of it at Ron at this time, he did pass away a year, two years ago from ALS. So, um, you know, this is a great tribute to, um, our program at Hopkins. So congratulations to the boys. I just, uh, let people know that, um, Next meeting, which I believe is July 21st, is that correct? Or Jennifer, 21st? Yep. The um, uh, Municipal Building Committee will be joining us to talk about the future of the Goodwin. So uh, we're going to be, that, that's one of our goals this year is to get that moving one way or another. Um, so we told them to have some recommendations and some actions for us to take. So they're, they're planning on being at the meeting on the 21st. Are we going to streamline that committee to five people? We could. we could. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't finish. I, I did. And I, I would like to look at all the committees that we do have over five members right now and, and consider all the positions and what they do and maybe drop some of these other committees back down to five. I think um, also- Put it on the agenda for discussion. Certainly. Um, do we have any update on the North Hadley um, building? Like what? Litigation in the courts. I'm talking about the North Hadley town, you know, building up there in North Hadley that I've tried to get down for the last 20 years. The old North Hadley Hall, where are we yeah, at? Yeah, that's, that? that's the one. Yes. I can share with you. You know, where, you know where we're at with that, Caroline? It's it's right now, it is still in uh, the courts and two, the, our attorney has spoken to another attorney. Um, so there is discussions going on but it is going to be a slow process. All right. Set the For fire the under there. You, you know what, Carolyn? It's, it's, the not, fire. it's, it's not them. It, this is the court. This is how it moves. So it's not that, that either attorney is not doing what they need to be doing. All right. I've kept well, in frequent contact with them. Okay. Um, do we need to contact anybody to get that moving? I have been in contact with all of the parties. I, okay. And Jennifer has helped with that as well. Is that in Ham is that in Hampshire District Court? So I I would rather wait if we were going to go into any further discussion. But right now, there's nothing major happening. But I think in the future, if we go into too much detail, we should have that discussion in executive session. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. I, I bother calling probably twice a week about that. So don't worry, Joyce. I'm, I'm all <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a point that based on the action that you did, um, now that there are only three commission members who were present during the hearing for Route 9, the hearing will have to start from the very beginning again. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I guess we'll have to figure that out um, with Janice or one of the other members, but thank you for that. Any other announcements before we go? Well, see you in a, see you in another week. No, two weeks. Two weeks. Two, two weeks. Okay, sounds good. Two. Pray right. for sun. If I could get a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Motion. Second. Motion by Amy. Second by Joyce. Any discussion? No. no. All those in favor, Jennifer. Go call Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. See you on the 21st. Good night. Good night. Good night.